We just got the first ever lore from Dream's point of view yesterday, and there is an absurd amount revealed in just this one six minute video. Theories confirmed, denied, and the official point at which a Lannan laser beam, an Australian Fortnite YouTuber, became important to the Dream SMP's lore. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but I'm going to cut straight to the important stuff. The first thing that's interesting is the fact that Dream suggests that Phil can die of old age, and that he isn't actually immortal. In fact, from the way he phrases it, it seems like Phil is on the verge of death, that if he didn't have allies, his passing would be seen as normal. Well, what, what about someone old? We can just like say it was an accident or something. Like like Phil. I mean, he's he's pretty old. He might die soon anyway. No. This raises two possibilities, each equally interesting. One, Phil isn't actually on the verge of death, but given that his age is one of his most defining traits, people would assume that he is. They don't know that he's actually immortal, so him dying isn't out in the blue. This explains the whole he has allies counter that Puns has, but there's also a second theory, which is kind of the opposite. What if Phil actually isn't immortal, like every other SMP member believes he is, but can just live a really long time? What if only a select few, his allies, know that he is immortal? It's definitely not normal for people to be immortal, but since his closest friends know this, they wouldn't buy that he just, you know, died in his sleep after Dream handed him that suspicious stew. This does raise the question of how Dream and Puns know, however, but given the amount of espionage these two do, as well as their nefarious involvement in what seems to be like everything at this point, it doesn't seem too out of the blue. Next, there's something really interesting in the video itself here, it's something that I don't see too many people talking about. Call me crazy, but isn't it just a tad weird to see the camera lingering on a wither skull while they're talking about the revive book, more specifically using it on someone and it working? We know already that withers are a major plot point thanks to Techno blowing up Lamanberg, but hold that thought. Techno blowing up Lamanberg. Techno who has a vault full of withers. Techno whose entire catchphrase is Technoblade never dies. The way Pun says it though, if you get revived, you never die in the first place. More specifically, that is, the only way people would notice is if you told them. Techno has always been one of the more distant members of the SMP, not one to share secrets or even emotions. The times when Techno's true emotions shine through are in the heat of battle, when he's across from Tommy, TNT raining down around them, when he's watching Rand die in front of him, help when Phil is being attacked by a zombie. Separate Techno from his friends, make Phil wonder why Techno keeps trading favors with the man who Tommy told him was evil, instill that doubt, and maybe, just maybe, you can use the power of the revive book to kill Techno. Maybe he can never die, sure, but you can make sure that he isn't alive, either. The themes of the Wither continue as the video goes on, as we see a Wither Rose behind puns. Wither Roses are stupidly annoying to get, you need a Wither to kill a mob for them to drop, and placing one here isn't an accident, it's not something that can just be overlooked as decoration. There is a theory on Tumblr that draws connections, however, between Wither Roses and the Egg that suggests that the Wither Roses are symbolic of the Egg's control over the SMP members. I explain it more in this video if you're interested. What I'm drawing from this is that we need to look at these characters again in the context of the SMP, not just in the vacuum of this video. And what is Ponza's biggest thing on the SMP right now, just after being Dream's ally? Well, it's being controlled by the Egg. Later in the video, we see Bad Boy Halo giving Ranbu maps, things he confirmed on Twitter were blueprints, and Bad known for being the ringleader of the Eggpire. We also know that Ranbu was imprisoned for some reason by Sam and that he can be controlled by Dream. What if Dream told Ranbu to get the blueprints from Bad, the blueprints that would later be given to Techno, and both Bad and Ranbu were forced to comply by the people that controlled them, the Egg and Dream respectively. Bad, who doesn't want Dream to escape, learns that Techno got out and manages to tell Sam about the exchange, which is why Sam puts Ranbu in prison, because he thinks he helped Techno escape given the whole blueprints exchange. This then raises two possibilities. One, Dream isn't working together with puns so much as he's working together with the egg, which is controlling puns. This would explain how Bad was convinced to go along with the plan, because the egg wants him to, but it'd also be hard to explain how he managed to break free of the egg's control to sabotage his plan with Dream. The second possibility, however, is that Pun used his connections from within the egg pyre to just make the trade happen, and that the egg itself doesn't care about Dream's plan in the first place. This is much more plausible and also explains the way Bad was able to break free and tell Sam about the exchange. I do have one final shot in the dark theory though, that the egg is controlling both Dream and Puns, and is therefore the explanation for how Dream can control Ranbu. But this has a lot of holes, even with the theory that what's gonna hatch out of the egg is Dream that I've explained in a previous video, but either way, this theory is nothing compared to the last theory that I have in store for this video. Okay, let's get to that theory then, with the biggest part of this video. First, I don't even think Vic and Laserbeam even logged on for the filming of this lore video, hence why the name tags aren't rendered, which is both hilarious and also I think pretty much confirms that this is where their story ends. Maybe they'll come back in an epic rescue later, but I doubt it. This is the end of the road for Boomerville. The duo are taken to this 
facility or a compound of sorts that we've never seen before. I don't know what it is with Dream and secret lairs that just scream evil, but if we brighten and slow this image, we can see a lab or even a factory facility of some sort surrounded by spruce trees. Given Boomerville's location, it's possible that this factory is close to them, but it's a lot more likely that it's miles away from every other structure on the SMP, given that we haven't seen it before. There, Dream and Puns kill Vic and Laser Beam in every way they could possibly conceive, and this immediately raises two things in my mind. One, this almost certainly tells us that the whole theory I had about Ranbu trading his lies through Dream's usage of a rival book was completely wrong. The amount of lies we see lost in this clip alone is enough to wipe out half the server for good. There is no way that Dream just has that many stashed away. This means the revival book is literally just infinite revivals, no strings attached, no real repercussions. I'm gonna come back to that later though, because it's important. Two, what if they missed a method? What if there's a way that you can be killed that the revive book can't reverse? It's definitely nothing physical, nothing like the end crystals or drowning that we see in the video, but consider this. The facility was in the middle of nowhere, where they would desperately try to make sure that it wouldn't be found, that Vic and Laser wouldn't be free. They probably couldn't have tested some methods of death because they were too loud and flashy. Methods of death, for example, like death by lightning. Is it really that much of a coincidence then that we found out earlier that Dream XD was actually the one who created the revival book, who accidentally dropped it on Schlatt's head? Dream XD, the god of the server, who we've seen on multiple times, punishes people by smiting them with lightning. There's an absolutely insane theory hiding here, something I can't believe I missed and if you're liking the video so far, consider subscribing. I love dissecting things like this, and you subscribing really helps me keep doing that. That theory I just talked about though, it hinges on one very specific, very interesting mechanic. Remember how Dream XD was the one who created the rival book and then dropped it on Schlatt's head? You're probably wondering how on earth you can just miss something like that, even as a god. This thing has near limitless power compared to what the mortals on the ground have, and you just drop it? Well, that becomes a lot more believable if the revival book was never meant to be used more than once. We see from the video progression that the way the revival book is used is that it's thrown into lava, destroyed, the power being used up, it seems, to revive the people you're reviving. Not just that, but one book being burned, that can revive multiple people, not just the one. We see both Vic and Laser Beam being brought back to life here. It's not that hard to imagine then that since these are disposable, Dream XC just forgot that he had one. It wasn't unique or one of a kind to him, it was like a golden apple. Sure, it's useful, but if you're missing one or two in an endgame inventory, no one's gonna really realize. What Dream XD didn't expect, however, is that Dream would memorize the contents of the revive book, that he would figure out that you don't need to have a specific book for it to have that power, that the only thing that needs to be the same is what's written inside. That's how Dream revived Vic and Laser that many times, by copying its contents into other books from a lectern that the original was placed on and testing it on them. He wrote those same words dozens, if not hundreds of times to perform the tests, and interestingly, pun saw them too. Every single aspect of Dream's plan here trusts Puns implicitly. Puns essentially has the same power as Dream at this point, but just has more credibility. People don't think of him as that much of a threat. Now, with all of this in mind, I want to take you back to Dream designing the prison, figuring out what he'd give the prisoner. Remember, he knows that he will be trapped in here, that's his plan, and wants to make sure he can give himself the power to get out if needed, but he doesn't want to let Sam know about this, because that would give away his plan. And that, dear viewer, is why he got the lecture. You see, this prison was supposed to be high security, a supermax vault that no one could escape from, and that's why it irked me to absolutely no end that for some reason, they gave the prisoner books and a lectern. Those items seem fine, but they also seem unnecessary. Why give the prisoner books to write in and not time to look at the sun or a better source of food? Why? books. And that's because Dream created revive books inside the prison. If we go back to the very start of Dream's stint in prison, we can see that he's throwing books into lava and is deathly afraid of falling in or being punched. Fast forward though, and he's swimming in lava as a joke. He's thrown loads of books into lava, and most importantly, he's thrown a clock into lava as well. Dream, you see, still can't alert Sam to his plot, and so he starts manipulating him from inside the cell. He draws attention away from the lectern by using it as part of another escape plan, trying to light another portal inside the cell before he starts messing with the books. After Sam replaces the obsidian in the cell with crying obsidian, he's lulled into a false sense of security. Sam is convinced that the lectern can no longer be used against him. This is then reinforced when Dream throws anything and everything into lava, not just books, so that they're camouflaged and they don't seem too out of the ordinary. Okay, so Dream has revived books in prison. That doesn't explain his swimming in lava, though. Who would use the books on him if he died? Well, when you die in Minecraft, there's a sequence of events that happen. You take your last tick of damage, your body kills over and dies, and then all of your items explode out of your body. It's very fast-paced. They see 
seem almost instant, but there is an order there, which means that technically, right after Dream dies from, oh, I don't know, swimming in lava, the book is thrown into lava by him dying, meaning he can get revived. The reason the cell is surrounded in lava and not just layers of obsidian, which would be much more defensible, is because Dream wanted a way to be able to use the revive book from inside the cell. And finally, that brings us on to the craziest part of this theory, what made me absolutely lose my mind when I thought of it. You see, there's a hole in this theory at first. It's plausible enough that after the trauma of being put in prison and tortured by Quackity, the Dream forgot the exact words of the revive book, which is why he burned so many while testing. The question is, who was he testing it on? The answer? Ranbu. More specifically, Enderbu. And this theory explains so much, it's insane. Dream would control Enderbu in the way that he somehow can and make him kill himself, ready for Dream to test the revive book on him. This failed a total of two times, hence explaining why Ranbu only had one life left while Dream was escaping, and the third and final time, Enderbu managed to get revived. But, and here's the thing, like Pons said in the start of this video, Enderbu would have obviously remembered being killed and revived and done what he does, written it down in the memory book, the now lost fourth memory book. Dream can't have Ranbu discovering that, it would foil his plans completely and absolutely destroy any shred of survival in the prison. Remember what Dream said? If you die and then you're revived, did you ever really die in the first place? If you die on your final life and you're revived, did you ever really die permanently? Enderbu walked up to Dream, who waited for the lava to drop, killed Enderbu, and took the fourth memory book from his corpse, making sure that no one would ever find out about his plan, burning it in lava. Ranbu was then revived, and revival spawns you back at the point of your death, the layers of reality that Ranbu was stuck in literally collapsing around him as he saw himself die and then be revived with no memory of what was going on, back in his normal state with no memory book to remember with anymore. Click the video on screen now to see the rest of the insane stuff Dream has been doing on the SMP, or click the other one which YouTube thinks you'll like. Subscribe!